In a prehistoric world dominated by giants, sauropods stand out as the titans of their time, with their massive bodies and long necks grazing the treetops of ancient forests. Yet, nestled within this lineage of giants, there exists a remarkable exception, a tiny sauropod that challenges our grandiose perceptions of these colossal creatures. The discovery of this miniature sauropod begins in the summer of 1998, in a quarry near Goslar, Lower Saxony in northern Germany. Here, a team of paleontologists led by Dr. Niels Knutschka made an extraordinary find. They uncovered a treasure trove of dinosaur fossils, not of the colossal giants typically associated with the sauropod family, but of creatures much smaller, yet unmistakably sauropod. Europasaurus holgeri, Europa, for the continent where this dinosaur was found, and saurus, Greek for lizard, combined with holgeri, translates to Holger's lizard from Europe, a fitting tribute to both its location and Dr. Holger Lutke, whose contributions were instrumental in the discovery and study of these remarkable fossils. Europasaurus lived some 154 million years ago, during the late Jurassic period, and grew to only about 6 meters, 20 feet, in length. This makes Europasaurus holgeri roughly the same size as a modern-day horse. Europasaurus holgeri belonged to the clade Macronaria, which includes some of the most iconic giants such as Brachiosaurus and Camarasaurus. However, Europasaurus's story takes a fascinating turn. When the Earth's continents were arranged differently from today, part of what is now Europe was a large archipelago of islands in a shallow, warm sea. It was on one of these islands that Europasaurus found itself isolated from its mainland cousins. Isolation on this island set the stage for a unique evolutionary process known as insular dwarfism. The principles of island biogeography tell us that in isolated ecosystems, especially islands, large species often evolve to become smaller due to limited resources, while small species may grow larger in the absence of predators. For Europasaurus, the limited food supply and space on the island necessitated a reduction in size to adapt to the new environmental pressures. This process of dwarfism allowed Europasaurus to thrive on its island home, where its smaller stature enabled Europasaurus to navigate through dense vegetation and exploit food sources that were inaccessible to larger, mainland sauropods. The physical build of Europasaurus included strong, muscular legs that were well-suited for supporting its body and maneuvering through the rugged island terrain. Evidence suggests that Europasaurus lived in herds, a social structure that could have offered protection against predators and facilitated the rearing of young. Living in groups also implies a level of social intelligence, enabling these dinosaurs to communicate and cooperate for the well-being of the community. When it comes to intelligence, assessing the cognitive abilities of dinosaurs is challenging, but paleontologists often use the brain-to-body weight ratio as a rough indicator. For Europasaurus, while direct evidence of brain size is limited, Related sauropod studies suggest that their brains were not particularly large relative to their body size, indicating that their intelligence might not have been highly developed by modern standards. Though they might not have been smart in the way modern birds or mammals are, their brains were likely sophisticated enough to manage the daily demands of Jurassic life, from finding food and water to evading predators and caring for their offspring. Among the Europasaurus were several distinct species, each adapted to the island's limited resources and space. The theropod dinosaur, Archaeopteryx, known as one of the earliest birds, fluttered through the skies, showcasing the dawn of avian evolution. Its presence indicates a complex ecosystem where the transition from dinosaur to bird was unfolding in real time. On the ground, the presence of small, agile theropods like Velocipes gurici, a relative of the Velociraptor, added a layer of urgency to the daily lives of Europasaurus. These cunning predators, adept at navigating the underbrush, hunted for insects and smaller prey. Though not a threat to adult Europasaurus, Velocipes gurishi would have eagerly preyed upon Europasaurus eggs or vulnerable juveniles. This constant threat from Velocipes and potentially other small theropods necessitated vigilant behaviors from Europasaurus perhaps influencing their social structures to develop protective strategies for their offspring, including communal nesting sites or herd formations that could deter these predators. Sharing the herbivorous niche with Europasaurus were smaller plant-eating dinosaurs, such as the Ornithopod Dissolatosaurus Letovorbeki. These agile, bipedal creatures grazed on the island's vegetation, 
possibly living in herds for protection against predators. The waters and skies were alive with activity too. Pterosaurs soared above, dominating the airways and preying on fish and small terrestrial vertebrates, adding another layer to the island's complex food web. Below the waves, marine reptiles and various fish species thrived, indicative of the rich marine resources that could have supported a diverse array of life, including potential aquatic predators of Europosaurus's carcasses or competitors for coastal resources. This thriving community on the island provided Europosaurus with both opportunities and challenges. While the absence of large predators due to the island's limited size reduced direct threats to adult Europosaurus, competition for food was intense among herbivores. It's likely that Europosaurus, with its unique size and feeding strategy, occupied a specific niche that allowed it to coexist with other plant eaters without direct competition for resources. However, the world that Europosaurus inhabited was not static. As the continents continued to drift apart, sea levels fluctuated, and climates shifted, the island habitats that supported unique ecosystems, including that of Europosaurus, underwent profound changes. Rising sea levels could have submerged portions of the island, reducing the available land for feeding and nesting, thus putting pressure on the already limited resources. Additionally, the changing climate could have altered the types and distributions of vegetation, directly affecting Europosaurus's food supply. The late Jurassic was also marked by significant volcanic activity, which could have had multiple impacts on Europosaurus and its environment. Ash clouds from eruptions could reduce sunlight leading to cooler temperatures and disrupting the growth of plants that form the base of the island's food web. Furthermore, volcanic activity could lead to the release of toxic gases and ash, directly threatening the health of living organisms. The delicate balance of the island ecosystem meant that Europosaurus was vulnerable to changes in the dynamics of predator-prey relationships and competition for resources. An increase in predator populations or the arrival of new competitive species possibly through land bridges formed during low sea levels, could have upset this balance. Such ecological pressures could lead to increased mortality rates, especially among juveniles, and a decline in population size. It's likely that no single event led to the extinction of Europosaurus. Instead, a combination of environmental changes, ecological pressures, and possibly disease or genetic factors contributed to its decline. As resources became scarcer and living conditions more challenging, Europosaurus populations would have struggled to sustain themselves, eventually leading to extinction. And there you have it, the extraordinary tale of Europosaurus hulgari, the tiny sauropod. If you found this glimpse into a less colossal yet equally captivating dinosaur interesting, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Every like helps. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Keep your curiosity alive and stay tuned for more amazing discoveries. See you in the next video.